again. Um, this one is not going to cover anything new for most of you. It's been done before, but I did have a request uh, to do a video about how I do measurements. So here goes. Centimeter measurements. These should be fairly straightforward and painless. The emphasis is on consistency. If you prefer to use a screen, by all means, but do that all the time. If you prefer to use a printed page, again, do that all the time. If you have a certain size font you prefer to use, consistency really does help. Also, your lighting. I prefer to measure in the evening because no matter what time of year, I can ensure that I can use full artificial light so that I have exactly the same amount of light in the same position of the room every time I measure. I don't necessarily measure every day. You don't have to after a while, but in the beginning, it's a good idea so that you can really notice your trends. Um, other than that, pretty straightforward. Um, gently close one eye. Helps if it's the right way. Gently close one eye. Look for that edge of blur where it goes from perfectly clear to just a little fuzzy. Not too blurry, too clear, too blurry, too clear, just barely fuzzy. Tack it down good and hard check your measurement and record it. Then you do the same for the other eye. So super simple. Um, you're going to notice these are going to vary from one day to another, which is perfectly normal depending on how much sleep you've gotten, how much water, how much light, always about how much light, um, how your overall feeling. Totally normal. Don't worry about those variations. It's more about the law of averages. Over time, you can notice a trend. And if you're not seeing a trend going up, it gives you an opportunity to troubleshoot what's going on before you've put weeks and months into no progress. So it's a very good way to get those minute little details of changes in your vision. So I definitely recommend doing it at least a couple times a week. Even if you've been doing it for a while, I still do it like three times a day or a week, three times a week, um, even though I've been doing this for a long time. You don't have to do it every day after a while, but again, do it in the beginning just so that you really get an understanding about your eyes, it's really going to help you understand and move forward with amyopia. Okay, next, Snelling chart measurements. You do not have to do these nearly as often as your centimeter measurements, though it's a good idea to do it more often in the beginning than in the long run. I'm down to about twice a month with my 10 foot chart, about once a month with my 20 foot chart, just because that's less convenient. But pick yourself a spot in the house that has pretty consistent lighting that you're going to be able to test on a fairly regular basis, always in the same position in the house. Um, just mark down these. Don't be emotional about it. Don't cheat. It's so tempting to use active focus and go, well, I can mostly make it out or squint at it. Don't do that. Just what's effortlessly clear to you that you can make out accurately. Uh, the standard is half or better of the line. If you get 50% or better on the line, that's technically passing for that line of vision. Um, make sure you check on the chart for how far away you're supposed to have yourself away from it. And if you do not have a Snellen chart already, check the links below. I will put in the description where you can find one. Um, also, before I reduce, I tend to take my 20 foot chart to the basement where there's some really lousy lighting. If I'm not seeing at least 20, 25, 20, 30 in that lighting, I generally don't consider myself ready to reduce, even though that's not the lighting I live under. It gives me a very accurate picture of how I'm seeing without having that light advantage to really help me along a little too much. While I'm at it, I always make sure that under those conditions, I can measure 20, 20 in my former pair of glasses and have those in my car for night driving. It's so important that you're not under prescribed at night. The lights do not fun things at night, um, between starbursts and halos, and at night is not the time to have blur challenge. It's not cute to be underprescribed when you're night driving. Please don't do it. Um, and that's about all there is on Snellen charts. And your third and final form of measurement, a landmark. Pick a landmark, preferably with some detail, as far away as you can look at from a consistent place. Uh, standing at a certain window at work or home, standing in a certain spot in the yard, 
And then you can watch as your vision progresses how much clearer it grows over time. This can be very encouraging because when you bring in your first reduction, it's going to be pretty blurry at that distance. That's natural. Um, over greater distance, your refraction error becomes more present and uh, noticeable. But as your eyes improve, that starts to clear up and eventually it will be so much more clear. I would recommend that you write down your first impressions of how blurry that landmark is. Um, also the lighting conditions because that's important. That way in a few weeks when you feel like it's vaguely clearer, you have something to reference rather than just your memory and impression of it. And it's a really great way to know how much your vision has improved. You're going to have doubts along the way and it never hurts to have proof positive confirmation of improvement. So I highly recommend this too. So all of it really does just boil down to consistency. As long as you're doing it the same way all the time under the same lighting circumstances, that's what it really boils down to. Other than that, you can't mess it up. As long as you don't cheat. Don't cheat. It's really just not going to benefit you. You're going to wind up reducing too soon and it's just going to wind up snowballing into something discouraging and don't do it. Um, trust your measurements. Go with your measurements. It's they're there for a reason. Your log is going to be invaluable to you over the long run. So I hope this helps and as always, best wishes in your journey back to 2020.